Hey, show where it is time now for my next guest who has become a worldwide a literary phenomenon selling 35 million books in 36 different languages. Uh, her 16th novel, My Favourite Mistake, is out now and has someone who makes us laugh, cry and want to give less of a feck. She will also be one of our favourite guests. Would you please welcome Marion Keane! <laughs> Thanks for coming to see us. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for having me. I know the new book is out. I know the world wants a slice of you. I've been watching the Instagram. Was it 8,000 copies? Yeah, signed. signed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, do you ever get tired of this global, worldwide success? Are you joking me? I, I mean, like, if, if nobody wanted to sign a signed copy, I wouldn't have a living. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's... I'm really lucky to be doing this and I'm really aware of it. And yes, I might whinge about uh, having to put me uh, hand in a bowl of ice every evening, but it's worth it. I mean, I feel really lucky. Uh, this is the book here. This is uh, my favorite mistake. Uh, you said this was an escape for you yeah. as much as the audience. Yes, uh, yeah. As the readers. Yeah, I started writing it about two years ago and I was all set to write something grim um, about terrible people. And uh, it was just, it was just, we were just out of the pandemic and then Russia invaded Ukraine. And I thought, in fairness, you know, just the world was too much. So I thought all I was reading at the time was love stories. And I thought, well, what would I like to write? And I thought I'd like to write a love story in a beautiful place between middle-aged people who are still fabulous. Well, they're not really fabulous, but, but they are to each other, <laughs> do you know? And, uh, and I had such a lovely time. It's kind of, sort of, it's based in Connemara, so it's a fictional town. But I think anyone who knows anything about small towns in Ireland will feel comfortable in, in that sort of uh, milieu, as they do say okay. in France. And, and it's, about, it's about looking back and it's about yeah. kind of owning your mistakes. And, yeah. Uh, you know, is this kind of where you are now in your own life? Yeah. Are you sort of happy in your nappy looking back at stuff? No, not entirely, no. I mean, I don't think anyone is. And especially during lockdown, you know, all that time of doing nothing. Things, decisions I'd made in the past or actions I'd taken or things I'd said, um, things that had legitimately hurt people. I'm not talking about cutesy things like forgetting somebody's name when you're sitting next to them at a dinner party and, you know, and it being hilarious like a day later. Like... It all started to come up for me and I, you know, like everyone, I realised I had done the best that I could at the time, you know, with the person that I was then and what I knew about myself. And, but it's, it's just part of getting older, realising that I've done things that I'm not really going to be able to fix. And what am I going to do with those feelings? So it's been a journey of kind of trying to fix the small things that I could and then just realising that I'm a human being and I am deeply flawed and I'm slightly less flawed now than I was back then. But so the whole book is about that. It's about two people who've known each other for 20 years. And, you know, it's been I was going to say on and off, but it was never entirely on. Um, they were always at different stages and they both married other people. Now they're both single. Now they're back in the same place and they've hurt each other. And it's like, how do you manage those emotions or those events? Um, and, and going back and maybe yeah, and being honestly that, sorry it, it, about stuff. Yes, and realizing that like I can't change what I did, but if I was if I had the chance to go back, I would do it so differently. And for me, I found huge kind of bam in writing it because I thought, look, at, I'm not a bad person, but I did things that I really am not proud of. Um, and, and the thing about it is, you know, there's all that serious stuff yeah. ra wrapped up. But it's bloody funny. Thank you. It, it, Asher, it, it's really funny. I mean, that's, that's my thing, though. Mm. I mean, it's my survival mechanism. I mean, and I mean, it's such it's a family I've written about before. Yeah. Uh, the five Walsh sisters and, and Mammy Walsh. And they're just gas. I mean, I love family dynamics anyway. And there's so much room for when you're with your family, you're never really the person that you are now in your adult life. 
you're the person, you know, I mean, I'm the dictator in my family of origin. I am the person standing at the bottom of the stairs with the clipboard yelling that we're going to be late. Like that's, they all have a good old snigger at me, you know, whereas we all have our roles, but I'm not just the dictator. I mean, I am quite a bit at the time as well, but you know, I do, I do other things too. Yeah. Um, one of the things which, which made me laugh was you said that you're now getting to, you know, despite all this brilliant success, that you're at the invisible age now. What's, what's being at the invisible oh, age? What does that mean? Um, I think, unless you're incredibly uh, beautiful, um, I think most women go through it. And yeah, I mean, I was always kind of glad to be invisible, but then when it actually happened for real, I wasn't delighted at all. Um, like, I go to this gym when I'm uh, in, in London, and uh, no, it's not all young men, okay? Hashtag not all young men. But when I'm in the gym and I go on the treadmill, it's all I do, you know, and I go there to kind of feel calm, you know? But there's all these young fellas, like, broing out and yelling at each other and, like, you know, and then they're, like, lifting these really, really, really heavy weights and the noise is out of them. Now, I can't see because I'm facing the wall because I'm there on my treadmill, but I can hear them. And it, honestly, it sounds like they're at themselves. And then when they, when they achieve whatever they're doing and then they drop the weights with the racket out of them then. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know. And so now and again, just for the crack, I yell at them. I say, would you mind keeping the noise down? And they're like, who, what, what? Like What's? in a Father Jack type way. Yeah, like a very, very angry. And they're thinking, who's that orc there on the treadmill? <laughs> oh, it seems to be some sort of, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, bro. And then, so they start again, and then sometimes I shout, thanks for sharing. And uh, then when I'm leaving, I usually say, enjoy your weekend in Norfolk, because they've told us all. You know, and, and then they start, where's, where's that voice coming from? Oh, sorry, in Norfolk? Yes. Oh, sorry, I thought you said something a lot ruder than that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's what they think. Or maybe that's what they were talking about. <laughs> it wasn't Norfolk at all. Well, now it's on me. No, it's on yeah. Me. So yeah, I'm invisible. It's grand. Uh, one of the things that really made me laugh in in the book was was with this little thing here, and it's it's about women getting to a certain part of their life. Yeah. Uh, and and what they have to deal with. Yeah. Uh, and uh, would you would you do 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 me a wee favour okay. and read that out because oh, that thanks. that is just this really tickled okay, me. Okay. Right. <laughs> you can tell I'm at a certain age. <laughs> right. Because I can't see anything. Right. Okay. Like every woman, I'd spent my life being told, nope, you're doing it wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You're too serious, too short, too confident, too flat-chested, too ambitious, too repressed, too hard, too flirty, too fat, too thin, too old, too hairy, too angry, too prissy, too messy, too stupid, too opinionated, too lazy, too emotional, too... And on ad infinitum. There you go. And, uh, and I realise, having said that, there's something, there's something really similar in Barbie. Um, but I wrote that first. I wrote it before I saw it. I just need to. I'm not stealing anyone else's material. No, she's stealing yours. Yeah, that's she's it. Stealing oh, yours. yeah, that Margot Robbie. But, but there is that thing. There is that thing, isn't there, uh, about the, the, a woman gets to a certain age. Uh, I, and, I don't and, think it's a certain age. Oh. I think it's from the word go. No, no, I'm serious. Like the, the minute like a woman becomes sexually attractive and therefore viable, she has to kind of become very, there is a very narrow rigid template that women are supposed to fit into to be the right kind of woman. And I mean, that's the message that was given to me from the word go. Like you have to be like about nine foot tall and four stone and like not entirely stupid, but quite stupid, really. Like, not embarrassingly stupid when you're out with your friends, you know. Like, you need to be able to drive a car and cook things and that, you know. And, like, you can be, you can be flirty, but never in a way that makes, you know, another man thinks that they're in with a chance. Like, there's all these things. And, like, it changes as you get through, you know. Because does it change or, or do you change? Because it strikes me now that, that, that your attitude... Yeah. Just, I kind of want your attitude on life, which is like, this is it, and sure, you know. Yeah, well, kind of. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a long way from there um, in that, like, I mean, I, I have Botox and I have fillers and I am, like, completely open about it. And that's kind of the thing because, like, you know, like, when I was going out without it, people were like, she's let herself go. Do you think she's... Them, them people, they should be getting their, their stuff in their faces. And then you get the stuff in your face and they go... She's had the stuff in her face. Honestly, that vanishing, I swear to God, you know? And then I say, I've had the stuff in my face. And they yeah. go, what you do? We don't need 
need to hear. You know, like you're damned <laughs> if you do it and you're damned, you're damned if you, you don't. don't. And then you're damned if you talk about it. Mm. And it is, it's difficult to be any, any woman uh, and to be in the public eye, to get stout in the public eye is, is a terrible thing. That's an unforgivable one. Um, that gets, I have experienced a lot, of, a lot of feedback on that. But no, it's, I mean, I can only do what I'm doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's the great thing about getting old. I'm too tired to try. Um, as we, there's great freedom in being exhausted. It's like, yeah, no, I'm grand. No, no, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll go as I am because I haven't the energy to take off my shoes. Yeah. Do you know, like, there, there is lovely freedom in that. You're I, too I, young, you don't understand. No, no, I'm yeah. not. I'm, <laughs> no, I, I, like, you, you know, we're all, we all go through that point and, and you sort of, you know, everybody gets to the point in their life where they have to make a decision between their arse and their face. Yeah, It's yes, that thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. But, but you seem to just, you know, you seem to be able to rise above it and just float through. Uh, I don't, though, really. I mean, I'm better at some things. You know, I'm better at... Um, if somebody tells me that I can't have something that I want to give them money for... Mm. Um, I was getting a picture framed and the man said I picked the wrong colour. And I said, I haven't picked the wrong colour, I've picked my colour. And, and he said, oh, all right then, okay. You know, whereas the old me would have said, oh, I see, well, he's an expert in this and I would have gone away with the wrong colour and then hated myself when I got home. But now I say, no, give me my colour. But the, the, the appearance thing goes deep, yeah. I think, for me anyway. You, you, you're talking about pictures there. Um, you are now hanging in the National Gallery, which is <laughs> amazing. I mean, it's... This like, is it, uh, proper it's, stuff. It's such a huge, huge... It's, probably, it's one of the nicest things that ever happened to me. And, like, when, when they came to me and said, could they paint, I couldn't understand why. Um, like, it's this so it. lovely. And then... Now, did you get to... How, how, how long did you sit for this? Um, did you, well, did you get various, a wee sneak peek? Or? I, I could have had a sneak peek, but I didn't want it because I wanted to look... I mean, I wanted to look nice. I mean, yes, you know, shoot me first. But, um, but I didn't want to interfere because, I mean, the artist is an amazing woman. Her name is Margaret Corcoran. And she... I loved her work anyway. And I just thought she has to paint me as she sees me. And I was prepared... Have you, you know the Francis Bacon paintings? Yes. You know, like, I mean, I was thinking, <gasps> OK, I, you know, if it's like that, you know, I, I could live with it. But it turned out to be, like... It's lovely, and it feels like me. But what it is, it, 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 it's you, but there's also all that lovely energy around, yeah. which I think is you as well. Oh, that's, well, I mean, that's Margaret. That's Margaret being Margaret, you know, and, and doing her beautiful work. I mean, it was such an honour, and it was just one of those beautiful things. We're exactly the same age, we're different by a month. We were brought up in the same area, and we're, you know, we love colour and beautiful things. And, the people who put us together, they obviously knew us both really well. It was just one of those lovely, lovely, lovely things. And, um, and I'm so honoured and so grateful. And like my mother said, you know, this will be hanging in the, in the National Gallery like long after we're, we're all dead and gone, you know. And it's, that is so strange. And it felt like a real endorsement from the grown-ups. You know, it's a proper yeah. grown-up thing. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, it, it, I was delighted. Like, I really, I'm so thrilled. Look, and we are absolutely delighted for you. We really, Thank really are. You. Uh, Thank you. Marion's book, uh, My Favourite Mistake, is in bookshops now. And uh, you're going to be appearing at the International yeah. Literature Festival, Festival in Dublin, Dublin in yeah. May. Uh, tickets at ilfd.com. Uh,